I'm as clean as can be, but I don't get this off, but it's going to look real nasty if I <laughs> stick my hands into, into meat and it looks like this. Yeah, good afternoon and welcome back to One Step at a Time Farmstead. Today we are attempting something for the first time, but that we are actually quite excited about trying, and that is making our own lunch meats or deli meats. We are going to make some chicken and cheese chicken and cheese deli meat and that is the nice thing about it when you go to the grocery store what they have on well available to sell is what you get and i mean it's the same thing across the board basically and making your own gives you the opportunity to actually make something unique and according to your and your family's taste and yeah that you really quite enjoy it's not you know the same thing across the board so you can actually play with your recipes yeah so the reason why we started looking into making our own lunch meats it's you know something that my family actually eats quite a lot of. I cook them sandwiches for the kids for their lunches at school or a quick lunch or light dinner sometimes. And it works out quite expensive. I mean, if you take the price, looking at the price of what we actually pay for, you know, your daily meats, you know, it's, it's quite expensive. I don't have the prices off end here now, but it is quite expen expensive. And when I started looking into making your own, you actually realize how cheap it, can be. <laughs> it actually is to, and how simple it is to make. Yeah, so I've looked at a lot of recipes, people making their own on YouTube. And it doesn't justify paying such a high price for something that is so easy and simple to make. And most of the time, they use pretty cheap cuts of meat in the first place. You know, all these off cuts and whatever. You know what a lot of people will call the mystery meat? Because you don't know. I mean, everybody's heard the stories of you know, what goes into a hot dog or a Vienna or a Russian or your bolognese or other processed meats. You know, the, the saying is always out there. If you know what is in it, you won't eat it. At least making your own, you know where your meat comes from and how it's been processed. You know what ingredients is in there and that is the other reason, you know, all the uh, uh, preservatives and chemicals, cancer causing chemicals that they put into, you know, your cured meat or processed meat is another concern. And I think, yeah, basically that is the three reasons. And it all started with the health, as the health aspect for me when I started looking into it. And then, yeah, it, from there, you just go into this deep dive of, you know, everything that is in it. And yeah, eventually we came to the conclusion it will be much better for ourselves if we make our own and look into that. And yeah, now we are going to try and make our own. But the three reasons is first of all, the health aspect, second of all, the cost, the cost aspect, it doesn't justify paying so much for such cheap cuts of meat that they use in the factories. And third of all is to actually create something that you and your family enjoy. I mean, you can play with your spices, you can play with your process and you can make 
something that is unique, just make something nice. Like she said she wants to do, we are going to use chicken breast meat. So she wants to make a chicken belly loaf, but with, instead of the cheese being emulsified into the meat, she wants to have chunks, <laughs> chunks of cheese. <laughs> You know, in, in a meatloaf, well... We're going to do that. We are going to do that. Daniel is going to handle all the meat today because my hands are still stained from paint. And no matter how much I scrub, because it's a rubber-based paint, I, I'm as clean as can be, but I don't get this off, but it's going to look real nasty if I <laughs> stick my hands into, into meat and it looks like this. Um, but I will uh, operate the grinder for the needle. Just another thing about this grinder, I just want to see if you get it on the picture. This little meat grinder or sausage maker whatever you want to call it. Daniel and I have had since we met because this used to belong to also this little meat grinder we've had since we've met um, because it was my it belonged to my parents and we took care of my parents when they were both uh, sickly and I remember as a child what it was used for is when my father actually made um, liver cakes. I don't think that he ever used it for uh, uh, something else, but those little liver, liver, liver cookies in Afrikaans, I don't know what it's in English. I think it's pate or something, isn't it? Pate. Pate is or something you spread. No, 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 no. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's like, almost like meatballs, but made of liver. I don't know what it's called in English, liver cookies. Anyway, and I don't think my dad ever used it for anything else. But, so this thing was always in a box somewhere, and it always traveled with us wherever we went. And eventually build up some rust and yeah I just decided you know to get it out we sanded it and cleaned it and I sharpened the blades and the plates again and you know basically refurbished you know the, the whole thing so for the first time in I don't know how many years, probably 30 years, we are going to use it. <laughs> However, the other plates, because I think there were two or three more plates, they got lost somewhere. But at least we've got this one. And yeah, it's maybe not the fanciest thing, but it's got a history behind it. And I'm actually quite excited to use Yay. To use this. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, Daniel will speak about the recipe and basically the equipment, other equipment that we will use, and I'll quickly get the chicken from the fridge. So, we've got two kilos chicken breast, still a little bit frozen. Um, it just makes grinding it a lot easier. Then we've got a tablespoon black pepper and tablespoon salt and then just half a tablespoon garlic powder and crushed chilies. And we hope the kids will eat the chili but otherwise just more fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically 
because this is our first attempt, we want to try and keep the recipe as simple as possible. You know, make this and then taste it and then basically see how we can better on the recipe next time. I mean, we can add herbs like thyme and oregano that goes well with, uh, and sage that goes well with uh, chicken, okay. nutmeg, cloves, which also which are also spices that goes well with chicken and obviously an all-time favorite South African thing is uh, coriander seed. This will be our basic recipe and then from there we can build on it yeah. and adapt and see how we can better our recipe. And then obviously We've got cheese that I'm going to cut into blocks. Yeah. And yeah, that is it. Okay. And then... Oh, the so meat pre meat press? Yeah. Meat? So we are going to ground the ch uh, grind the chicken. Ground, what, what do you call it? Grind. Grind the chicken. <laughs> and then it will go into this mold. With the springy key? Yeah, it's, this is a loaded spring or spring loaded plate that will basically go on top of the meat. Yeah, to compress your, your meat in the mold. Then it's got a lid going over that. And your thermometer. So what's nice about this meat press is, is actually a hole in the lid for the thermometer, thermometer, <laughs> thermometer to go in, so you can get your reading in the center of the meat, yeah, which your, should be about what 80, 80 degrees Celsius between 70 and 80, yeah. which is like two and a half million degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> actually, like 180 ish. 180-ish. Okay, so you're about <laughs> 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, for your internal temperature of your yeah. of your loaf then. Okay. Okay, so let's get to grinding the chicken. Okay, so from here I can Grind the chicken and the meal will feed it a little bit at a time. I'm actually quite excited. It's the first time us doing something like this. <laughs> so it's all a learning experience. A lot of old muscle for that. No, it's not difficult at all. I'm actually quite surprised after all these years lying in a box. Okay, it was a bit cleaning up, removing some rust, and that's it. And I sharpened the plates and the. Yeah, uh, maybe I should get a wooden spoon. It's the only thing that I think it needs is a bit of a plunger. Yeah. The electric would be better. Uh, no, I actually enjoy this. We can get an electric one, but I would 
keep this one. For the simple fact that say we don't have electricity, you know, with our beautiful, competent, not corrupt at all government. You know, should a freak accident happen and not corruption, not theft, <laughs> that causes us South Africans not to have electricity, okay. we've still got a way to process our meats, and I mean we can make vores, sausages, mm -hmm. uh, cabernossi, salamis. Ah, well, I don't think I'd get an electric one now, but if we had one, we could use it. Yeah, well, it's... I think it will be quicker, but... At least, what I mean, looking at what happened to our brothers and sisters in America with Hurricane Eileen and now this Hurricane Milton, mm -hmm. um, Should we be without power, this is one good way to take your meats from the fridge, which are the, you know, which is busy defrosting, um, and you make that into carbonosi or dry walls or salami or, mm. you know, you cure it and dry it. Then you've got meat that's preserved or that you are preserving that you don't need refrigeration for. Yeah. You know, making is what the Americans will call summer sausage basically. Mm. Uh, it's just like a carbonosi salami, the rolls type of thing that don't need refrigeration yeah. and you save your meat. So I mean learning from what happened there I'm looking at ways where we can be more prepared, prepared on the one hand but more resilient and making the best of a, a bad situation and still thrive, you know, yeah. still. Yeah, but I feel badly, I mean, so many people that lost everything. And I mean, something like this wouldn't have helped, you know, a person whose whole house got swept away, but still being without power for two weeks and your fridges are running down and whatever, at least you've got a way to use and preserve your, your meat. Yeah. Long story short, electric one would be fine for everyday life but having something like this is even better because yeah. you get a nice workout as well <laughs> and I don't know I just like going back to the olden ways you know at least have something and have some skills of life in the olden ways, the pre-electric and technological. I'm, 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 
happy for the technology that we've got now because at least we get to learn you know from YouTube and other websites and ebooks and everything the information is at your fingertips um, and unfortunately although my grandparents still practice preserving and stuff like that my parents never did mm. so it's knowledge that hasn't been carried over to me and my siblings so the technology is at least there for us to learn but I still want to in some way document everything and have the information for our kids and our kids' kids someday. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah. So that when they get into a situation, they might also have the knowledge. Even if it is just some written down wisdom in the form of a book, a recipe book or something. So I want to publish a book about stuff like this, but there's so much I'm learning still. But I mean, even if it's just for the family that... Mm -hmm. You know, our kids can have and as an heirloom and hand it off to their kids someday and so that when or should they ever find themselves in trouble circumstances they've got some wisdom written down that they can then apply that's all we As soon as you think it's done, it goes again. But I think it's done. Yeah. Yep, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how old this thing actually is. Because saying it was last used 30 years ago is an underestimation. So I can't remember how old I was as a kid. So maybe even closer to 40 years old. That oh, well, since had, it was last used. We've had it for 17. And I was, over 17 years. Yeah. And you... I was a child when my father last made liver cookies liver in the balls whatever you want to call it I don't know so now I'm going to wash my hands liver patties I don't know you call it. <laughs> but you shouldn't go over 20% by weight I mean this is 2 kilos so it's 400 grams yeah. But you can add cheese or whatever. Yeah, so let me get the But then again says who <laughs> Well, let's see how much it's and done. if we go over two hundred grams, so what? <laughs> exactly. Who's gonna phone the police? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, then it's well according to what I've read if you add fat or other things they say then exceed twenty percent. But for fat it makes sense. Yeah. But I don't think whatever you put it because I mean if we wanted to add olives and pistachios who says 
only 10 or 20 percent who made that rule and what are they going to do if I break that rule? <laughs> I think I'm anyway going to be under. I think that's too big. Mm -hmm. You can have it any way you want because you don't, I don't know, you can have it completely grated fine and it will basically disappear in the meat. But then you might as well just have bought something from the shop. Exactly. Having chunks in there. Oh, well, I want to know I'm eating cheese. I want to yeah. see I'm eating cheese <laughs> as well. Okay, well, that's like only 105, so we're good. I think that's a nice thing about experimenting with food and recipes. Make something you enjoy. Yeah. Like adding chilies and jalapenos, but Well we I have to <laughs> chilies here. Yeah, you compromised a little. A little. It's fine. We can make another one if you want. No, it's fine. Let's get the family happy first. The kids. The kids. Having them happy and them enjoying it means it's something that we can do regularly, which works out cheaper and more healthy. Our kids do like a ham. It's called meat. So. Cold meat. Maybe one more slice. Okay. Well, I'll see you. It's your recipe. If it doesn't work, don't try it. <laughs> if it works, <laughs> try it. <laughs> True. I don't know, sorry, just pause, unwrap quickly. I don't know how they manage that. Look how skew that's cut, but the slab of cheese is flat. <laughs> Perfectly even. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> oh, you never tell me my secret. <laughs> And I so want to get into making our own cheeses as well. Yeah. It will come. With time. It will. There's a nice book. Where did I see the book? But it's everything about cheese making and different cheeses recipes. I think take a lot. Take a lot. But I saw it. But then they, they start you off with normal, like, farm-style mozzarella and cottage cheese, stuff like that. And then they go into your aged, you know, cheeses and... How oh, oh, 374. Oh, that's close. Yeah. So that's good. Still under 20%, so... The rule makers will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how when you make a basic recipe, whether it's brying a steak or cooking a chicken in an oven, whatever your basic recipe you goes to is always salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. That's it. <laughs> Oh, sorry, not sorry that you didn't let it in. My hands look dirty. They clean, sorry, but they I'm look dirty. Sorry, I'm doing this today. <laughs> um, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about all meat. I've come for... No, you in, the, yeah. in the beginning, I wouldn't even separate meat and freeze it. You'd have to do that. Yeah. I just came, just couldn't do it. And now look at me, I'm playing with chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a rooster play though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to use my <laughs> clean fingers that doesn't look clean.
Ah ja, also es waren die User Bed of this Spray and Cook. Of course, we are not going to put it in a plastic bag like some suggest. I don't think cooking things in a plastic bag is healthy at all. So we are going to use the mold just like that, but I am going to just spray it. Just every now and then push it down as well so you get all the air bubbles out. Yeah. Okay, so one loaf is then going to be roughly about a kilogram. Okay. So one loaf is then going to be about a kilogram, roughly. Not really, yeah. Because I mean, it's awful. First time, yay! That I did it. Quite easy. High five. Yay! Okay, and then put your thermometer in. And then we just put this in a water bath. Yeah. Till it reaches temperature. Oops. Oops. Set. Wait. Wait, set, 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 wach, 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 okay. Good boy. Well done. Just one thing, we got these stove covers. Um, which helps a lot when there is spillage, especially when my daughter, she cooks excellently, but yeah, she can <laughs> be messy <laughs> sometimes. Okay, so it's just a pot with water, and then, and then we... The water doesn't have to cover the... What's this? Meat press? Yeah. Chicken press in this case. Um, and you also don't have to boil the water, it should simmer for a few hours. So I'm just going to make this a bit higher. Perfect. Then we bring it up to temperature. When it reaches temperature, we will record again. Okay, we went a bit over the temperature which were supposed to be between 70 and 80 we reached 90 and we removed it from the pot yeah now we just need to let it cool down and then put it in the refrigerator overnight okay so this is the chicken lunch meat we left it overnight yeah since we moved to this new property i can't find my slicer and I'm not the best slicer with a knife, but let's see. Oh, look at all my cheese. You want to try a piece? Mmm. It's good. <laughs> you want to try, Bucks? Here we go. Whoops. <laughs> we didn't even taste it. Lots of cheese in there. Lots. I think maybe next time. A little bit more chili flakes. Mm -hmm. You do get the taste, but a mm. little bit more. Cheese, I think, is good. Yeah. Cheese is good. Garlic, also there. Mm. I think overall, really good.
I think with the cheese, I'll maybe add something like smoked paprika. Yeah. It will bring out that flavor a bit more. But it's really, really good. I do like it.